pastoralists in the modern world. In this chapter, you will read about nomadic pastoralists. Nomads are people who do not live in one place but move from one area to another to earn their living. In many parts of India, we can see nomadic pastoralists on the move with their herds of goats and sheep or camels and cattle. Have you ever wondered where they are coming from and where they are headed? Do you know how they live and earn? What their past has been? Would you like to learn about them? Well, we will. Pastoralists rarely enter the pages of history textbooks. When you read about the economy, whether in your classes of history or economics, you learn about agriculture and industry. Sometimes you read about artisans, but rarely about pastoralists. As if their lives do not matter. As if they are figures from the past who have no place in modern society. Well, in this chapter, you will see how pastoralism has been important in societies like India and Africa. You will read about the way colonialism impacted their lives and how they have coped with the pressures of modern society. The chapter will first focus on India and then Africa. So why wait? Let's just move along. In the mountains, even today, the Gujar Bakharwals of Jammu and Kashmir are great herders of goat and sheep. Many of them migrated to this region in the 19th century in search of pastures for their animals. Gradually, over the decades, they established themselves in the area and moved annually between their summer and winter grazing grounds. In winter, when the high mountains were covered with snow, they lived with their herds in the low hills of the Shivalik range. The dry scrub forests here provided pasture for their herds. By the end of April, they began the northern march for the summer grazing grounds. Several households came together for this journey, forming what is known as a kafila. They crossed the Pir Panjal passes and entered the valley of Kashmir. With the onset of summer, the snow melted and the mountainsides were lush green. The variety of grasses that sprouted provided rich, nutritious forage for the animal herds. By end September, the Bakarwals were on the move again, this time on the downward journey back to the winter base. When the high mountains were covered with snow, the herds were grazing in the low hills. In a different area of the mountains, the Gatti shepherds of Himachal Pradesh had a similar cycle of seasonal movement. They too spent their winter in the low hills of Shivalik range, grazing their flocks in shrub forests. By April, they moved north and spent the summer in Lahol and Spiti. When the snow melted and the high passes were clear, many of them moved on to higher mountain meadows. By September, they began their return movement. 
On the way, they stopped once again in the villages of Lahol and Spiti, reaping the summer harvest and sowing the winter crop. Then they descended with their flock to the winter grazing ground on the Shivalik Hills. Next April, once again, they began their march with their goats and sheep to the summer meadows. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description of the number. Further to the east in Garhwal and Kumau, the Gujar cattle herders came down to the dry forests of the Bhabhar, Bhabhar, a dry forested area below the foothills of Garhwal and Kumau, in the winter and went up to the high meadows, the Bagyals, Bagyal, vast meadows in the high mountains in summer. Many of them were originally from Jammu and came to the UP hills in the 19th century in search of good pastures. This pattern of cyclic movement between summer and winter pastures was typical of many pastoral communities of the Himalayas, including the Bhotias, Sherpas and Kinoris. All of them had to adjust to seasonal changes and make effective use of available pastures in different places. When the pasture was exhausted or unusable in one place, they moved their herds and flocks to new areas. This continuous movement also allowed the pastures to recover. It prevented their overuse. On the plateaus, plains and deserts. Not all pastoralists operated in the mountains. They were also to be found in the plateaus, plains and deserts of India. Dhangars were an important pastoral community of Maharashtra. In the early 20th century, their population in this region was estimated to be 4,67,000. Most of them were shepherds, some were blanket weavers, and still others were buffalo herders. The Dhankar shepherds stayed in the central plateau of Maharashtra during the monsoon. This was a semi-arid region with low rainfall and poor soil. It was covered with thorny shrub. Nothing but dry crops like bajra could be sown here. In the monsoon, this tract became a vast grazing ground for the Dhangar flocks. By October, the Dhangars harvested their bajra and started on their move west. After a march of about a month, they reached the Konkan. Now this was a flourishing agricultural tract with high rainfall and rich soil. Here the shepherds were welcomed by the Konkani peasants. After the Kharif harvest, Kharif, the autumn crop usually harvested between September and October, it was cut at this time, the fields had to be fertilized and made ready for the rubby harvest. Rabi, the spring crop usually harvested after March. Dhangar flocks manured the fields and fed on the stubble. Stubble, lower end of grain stalks left in the ground after harvesting. The Konkani peasants also gave supplies of rice, which the shepherds took back to the plateau where grain was scarce. With the onset of the monsoon, the Dhangars left the Konkan and the coastal areas with their flocks and returned to their settlements on the dry plateau. The sheep could not tolerate the wet monsoon conditions. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description.
In Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, again, the dry central plateau was covered with stone and grass inhabited by cattle, goat and sheep herders. The Golas herded cattle. The Kumaras and Kurubas reared sheep and goats and sold woven blankets. They lived near the woods, cultivated small patches of land, engaged in a variety of petty trades and took care of their herds. Unlike the mountain pastoralists, it was not the cold and the snow that defined the seasonal rhythms of their movement. Rather, it was the alteration of the monsoon and dry season. In the dry season, they moved to the coastal tracts and left when the rains came. Only buffaloes like the swampy, wet conditions of the coastal areas during the monsoon months. Other herds had to be shifted to the dry plateau at this time. Banjaras were yet another well-known group of graziers. They were to be found in the villages of Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. In search of good pasture land for their cattle, they moved over long distances, selling plough cattle and other goods to villagers in exchange for grain and fodder. In the deserts of Rajasthan lived the Raikas. The rainfall in the region was meager and uncertain. On cultivated land, harvest fluctuated every year. Over vast stretches, no crops could be grown. So the Raikas combined cultivation with pastoralism. During the monsoons, the Raikas of Barmer, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur and Bikaner stayed in their home villages where pasture was available. By October, when these grazing grounds were dry and exhausted, they moved out in search of other pasture and water and returned again during the next monsoon. One group of Raikas, known as the Maru, that is the desert Raikas, herded camels, and another group reared sheep and goat. So we see that the life of these pastoral groups was sustained by a careful consideration of a host of factors. They had to judge how long the herds could stay in one area and know where they could find water and pasture. They needed to calculate the timing of their movements and ensure that they could move through different territories. They had to set up a relationship with farmers on the way so that the herds could graze in harvested fields and manure the soil. They combined a range of different activities, cultivation, trade and herding to make their living. Now how did the life of pastoralists change under colonial rule? That is something we're going to study but not just now in the next chapter. So let's move along. अगर आप अपने सिलेबस के सारे चैप्टर्स इस फॉर्मेट में देखना चाहते हैं तो हमें डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए नंबर पर कॉल करें ऐसे ही और एजुकेशनल वीडियोस देखने के लिए हमारे चैनल होम रिवाइज को सब्सक्राइब करें